will definitely look after me. It's impossible that he doesn't. And if something negative happens as a result, I must firmly believe that this was the best thing that could have happened because I've got a good relation with Allah and this was part of my test. Ultimately, what will happen? I'm going to die. You are going to die. When you die, a mu'min, a believer looks at it as the end of your test. But other people want to cling to dear life. Like I tell people, that you know what? If you want to understand how temporary this world is and how man thinks it is so permanent, then answer two questions. When do you want to die and how do you want to die? Two things. Let's see what you say. So I asked one brother, he says, I want to die at 100 years. So I said, and how do you want to die? And he scratched his head and scratched his head and scratched his head. I said, so Allah has done you a favor. And he says, we will choose. We will choose. You don't know how you're going to go. How your examination is going to come to an end. I don't know. You don't know. And because we are such, we would want to cling to dear life no matter what. So Allah says, do you know what? We do you a favor. We'll decide when and how. That's it. Because if we leave it to you, you'll never want to go. And you, and you will never ever choose a method of going. Because at the end of the day, that is the end of this life. So don't think that this life is permanent. It's actually very, very temporary. So Yusuf alayhi salatu was salam now that he denied, he turned away from this woman and she tried and she tried very hard. So much so that it became physical and she wanted to drag him and actually tore his clothing. But he made a dua to Allah, oh Allah protect me from this. Let's be honest. I'm going to take off the gloves for a minute. Let's be honest. An opportunity of adultery in today's world is hardly missed by people. Let's be honest. Except those who have Iman. And this is why a person whom the opportunity was afforded to, and he turned to Allah, crying to Allah, Oh Allah, protect me, save me, save me. Even if they jail me, Allah, save me from this. Imagine the closeness to Allah of such a person. Amazing. May Allah grant us goodness and strength. Sometimes things dangle in front of our eyes in terms of material wealth of this world and goodness and so many other things. And we don't realize we rush towards it without looking at whether it pleases Allah or not. And we achieve so much negatives in res as a result of it. We don't realize Yusuf alayhi salam, the doors opened for him one after the other when they started opening. But for now, one closed, the other one closed, another one came, everything was looking negative. You know, for us, it happens in my part of the world. If one negative happens to you, you might say, oh Allah protect me and so on, we turn, we cry. Two negatives, three negatives, then we start believing a story that some neighbor told us that someone did something on you. That's what happens in my part of the world. Then we go to a fortune teller. And then we ask the soothsayer, what happened? And he tells you, one of your family members did magic on you. And that's how we end it. Yusuf alayhi salam, one thing happened, two things happened, three, four, five, and he continued to call out to Allah and he had hope and he asked for another issue. He said, oh Allah, better than me transgressing against you because you're the only one on my side here. I'd rather go to jail. Rabbi sijnu ahabbu ilayya mimma yad'unani ilayhi. Oh Allah, what they are calling me towards in terms of adultery and sin, I'd rather be jailed instead of doing that. Oh Allah, protect me. Imagine he's asking, oh Allah, let them do what they want, but I don't want to engage in this. So this is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is why a lesson we learn from it is my brothers and sisters to get goodness in this world. You need to obey Allah's instruction. Try. We are weak. We are human. We might falter sometimes. Turn back to Allah. Read your salah. Ask Allah's forgiveness. You find his love descending in a way that you can actually feel it. You find the doors opening one after the other. With us, when we get, we turn away from Allah. May Allah protect us. You're getting, the one who's giving it to you is the owner. He is Allah. Turn towards him. Because you know what? Your time is limited in this world. Make use of it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all and grant us goodness in this world and the next. This man was taken and thereafter he was jailed. He was jailed. He spent some time in jail, but he was not depressed in the jail. He was not depressed. Depressed meaning, you know, for example, a person is jailed. He was wrongly jailed and that also shows us that sometimes people are jailed yet they are innocent because sometimes the law is guilty of finding the innocent guilty and it's not actually the person. But the main point we learn when Yusuf alayhi salam entered the prison, he had such positivity beaming from him that immediately the two cellmates who saw him, they spoke to him. They said, hey, you look like a good guy. That's exactly what they said. Inna naraka min al-muhsineen. 
They said, we see you as a nice person, a good person who does good. You look like a good guy. In our language, we'd say, you look like a good guy. We want to ask you a question. He said, hang on. He heard the question. They asked about their dreams. But before he interpreted the dream, he seized the opportunity to spread the deen. He gave them something. What was it? He said, look, this is who I am. This is my family. This is my lineage. And I want to tell you, many people do not thank the Almighty for what they have been granted. But I want to ask you a question. You worshipping many gods and so on. Isn't it better to just worship one God and so on? Subhanallah. He sees the opportunity to engage in the discussion. I learn from this and I'm inspired by it to say in the toughest of moments, touch someone's life in a positive way. Give them a little bit of the deen. And I say, today sometimes we are weak. You know, people are shy. You look at someone walking in a suit and you say, brother, why don't you adopt this and adopt that? Some people are shy. You know, to be honest with you, we should not be shy. But if you are a living Muslim, your presence is da'wah. The fact that you are just there, your name is Muslim, you're an honest person, you have upright character, conduct, you interact with people, you are, everything is positive about you, that alone already shows that you are a da'i. You are calling out towards Allah without even having uttered one word yet. So just live a good Muslim. Live a good Muslim. You know, there was a person who, like we did today, he picked up lost property, and he, he was trying to return it to its owner. So one man who was a non-Muslim said, Wow, that is so honest of you. Immediately he replied, he said, It's not actually the honesty. It's just so Muslim of me. Meaning I'm a Muslim. It's, it's, it's my nature. I wouldn't eat it. It's not a big deal for me. This thing here, no matter how valuable it is, I'm going to try and find the person who has lost it. Because I will achieve a reward. So remember, when you do these things, small things, Wallahi, it goes a very, very far way in spreading the deen. Yusuf alayhi salam was direct. If you can be direct, alhamdulillah, there are certain people closer to you. You work with them, your colleagues, your mates, those who work for you who are not Muslim. And even those who are Muslim, to remind one another of goodness is something extremely important. And how do you remind one another of goodness? Let me tell you. The same way you would spread the deen to the non-Muslims. You can either do it by your actions. If a person sees you, you're a wealthy businessman, a top job, you have this, you are working abroad. When you come back to your native land, for example, you are so honest. You are so, you don't miss a salah in the masjid. Those who are mediocre will say, but that man is so wealthy, he's got everything. Look at him, he's reading salah and he's so close to Allah. I think we all need to do this as well. Wallahi, they learn. This man is so wealthy, but he greets us. This man has such a top position, but he comes, he asks, how are you? How is your family? How is this? How is that? These are small things we take for granted. People think we are dry and we have lacking in contentment and so on. No, we are not the dry people. We are people who beam goodness and peace. And we would like others to feel the goodness we are in. So therefore, reach out to them the way you